Beis Gimel, top of the page. The Altareb is explaining that even in a Lukuth, there's a level of Sefer Kolam, Malak Kolam, and initially the Altareb was saying that Hashem giving existence to the world is not like the Nisham in the body. Nisham in the body becomes affected, and there's head and body and feet, there's different categories. And by Hashem, Ani Hashem, like Shani, Hashem doesn't change. So, then the Altareb asked the question, but we find that even in, in Alukus with the world, there is such a thing. So he says, yeah, there's Mamalak Olam and Sevek Olam. There's the ray of the Shekhinah that gives life to existence to the world over there. Thank you. Over there, there's a difference between Atzilis and Bria, Yitzir and Asi. Over there, there's differences. But then there's, so it's called Sevek Kolam. That's what he's in the middle of explaining now. Sevek Kolam means Hashem is completely removed from the world. He's just sustaining the world indirectly. Like the Neshama, when it comes into the body, the whole body is alive. So, but it's an indirect. He's not dealing with the head in particular and the foot in particular and so on. So he says in Gimel like this, This level of mamala kol almin is is only a ray of the shechina. Abuhu is part of Hatzma, but Hashem himself is called the Shemuvdol Shainim Islabish Chasvishom Techelimitz. Hashem doesn't dress itself, meaning in simple English, it's spiritual. Hashem is not affected by what goes on in the world. That means in this level of Hashem, you do a mitzvah, you do an aveda, you do this, you do it, totally irrelevant. It doesn't do anything. Even the main chayas, the main life of Hashem that gives existence to the world, doesn't dress its up meaning, it doesn't permeate in it, that's the level of Seyvul Kalam. Okay? So basically, the Rebbe here is, don't forget this is what some of the earlier stuff in Chassidus. Now, the Rebbe is introducing the concept of Seyvul Kalamin and Mamala Kalamin. Mamala Kalamin is that level of a locus that's affected by world. Seyvul Kalamin is that level of godliness that's so infinite and so great, it has nothing to do with the world. Possession is barely ill. And that's what he explained before. That this life that Hashem sustains the worlds is not similar to the way the Shaman gives life to the body. Why? Shh. Because Hashem gives existence to the world, even though He doesn't deal directly with the world. Save him, and therefore, and therefore, this level of mamala kolalman, which is ziva adabul vat, is only a ray of sevim kolalman, and that's called ziva shechina. Like we said yesterday, the pasuk said, and Dal Terebet quoted this: Yahalu lo Hashem, Hashem, kinisk of shmei levadi. The name of Hashem is removed from the world, meaning he doesn't deal directly with world, rather only indirectly with world. And that level doesn't become affected by world. Then you say, His ray, not the ray of Hashem, the ray of His name. That means, basically, is a ray of Sev of Kolalman that's internalized within each level of the world, according to that level of the world. Atzilis is more refined, it gets more. Bri is less refined, it gets less, and so on. Therefore, in that level of alokus, the world doesn't affect Hashem at all. Unlike the neshama that finds itself directly connected to the body, Okay, because that level is in the body. moving from there, we understand is In this level of sevul kolalman, this encompassing infinite level that only indirectly deals with world. In is You can't have head and, be- and beginning and end, up and down. And that's what we say nizgav shmei levade. That level is removed from world. Hey, they are led to Shemayim, meaning. Shedak, Haziva, it shall Shemay is Baruch Mislam, okay. Avil Shemay Atme, O Kodesh, move the Meniskiv Levada. Okay, by the way, this is where we're up to. 
That level of godliness cannot reveal itself in a way of cause and effect. In other words, that level of godliness has to create yesh mi'ai in something from nothing. The difference between cause and effect and something from nothing is cause and effect means the cause is directly connected to the effect and the effect is directly connected to the cause. For instance, seichel and midas, intellect and feelings, based on the intellect is a level of the midah. Based on the midah, you can know where the level of intellect is. For instance, a kid who has minimal maturity of a brain, so their desires, their midas, their loves and their fears is very childish because their intellect is childish and therefore their, 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 what they want is, is childish. The more, the older a person becomes officially, the more mature they become. So their intellect is mature, so their desires are more mature. That's the hope. Huh? Hopefully. The hope. Yeah, just, um, so he says, that's, that is ila ba'olo, cause and effect. Yesh means it's nothing and something. The something and nothing have absolutely no connection between them. So therefore, the ayin is not based on the yesh, and the yesh is not based on the ayin. Because there's no connection between the two. And he says, inyan ilo la'olu. The inyan of cause and effect, just like seichel stimulates and reveals the feeling of the heart, umefam the midah comes machshav. In other words, like this, intellect stimulates feelings. If you love something, you, you, then you talk about it. So you have intellect is stimulating feeling. Feelings stimulate thought and speech and action, by the way. Then the essence of the seichel is connected to the midah because the midah is based on the intellect. Himself is the level of is not all connected to world whatsoever. It's not like the effect understands its cause. And that's what we say. Okay. Oh, I thought you were nodding to me. Okay. Therefore, that level of Elokus, that level of Elokus is Ani Hashem Leishanisi. I don't change. It doesn't matter before the world, after the world, because world has absolutely no effect on Hashem, so therefore it doesn't matter. The same way you existed before the world, that's the way you exist to be Shinivrelem, Hako Beshava. And that's what we say, Elokim Chayim Umelechaylem. The living God and the King of the world. What does that mean? That chayis that comes into Melech Elam, that Hashem sustains the world, Elokim Lashurabim. And here's another very interesting concept in Chesidus. Hashem has seven names that are, so to speak, non erasable. Seven holy names. The only name of God, which is plural, is Elohim. Yudki Vavki is not. And no other name of God is plural except Elohim. Huh? That's also not, when you talk about Tzvokim, that's by Hashem, it's singular. The only name of Hashem that's plural is Elohim. Now, why is Elohim plural? Because pluralism <laughs> begins from the name of Elohim. What do you mean pluralism? Yesh miyayim. Okay, how did God create the world? Relations bara Elohim. Vayomer Elohim. Vayomer Elohim. All the ten utterances are Vayomer Elohim. Now, the, at the end, it says, Vayayim says Hashem Elohim. Then already Hashem put the name of Havaya together with Elohim. Why? So there's a medrash that Chassidus always brings down. Initially God, in, so to speak, that doesn't mean, I'll explain in a second what it means. Initially God wanted to create the world with the 
attribute of justice. You know, means simply, you sin, you're out of here. You do something wrong, you're out of here. You know? Hashem saw the world won't exist like that. Everybody will be out of here before we're born. So he says, Hashem combined with it the attribute of mercy, which is Yudke Vavke. Kel is Chesed, Elohim is Gevora, and Havai is Midas Tefedes, Merachim. So what it means like this, the only, how, where does pluralism begin? In Ilava Olu, in cause and effect, where the effect feels the cause, so then it means it's bottled to it. If it doesn't feel it, it's not bottled to it. In other words, it's subservient to it, it's subjugated to it, because it feels it. If we would feel a locus, we would also be bottled to locus and only do what Hashem wants. Why are we not? Because we don't feel a locus. That's the case of yesh miyayin. Yesh miyayin means there's something from nothing. I, if nothing is the source, so how can be something from nothing? Why is God nothing that we say it's something from nothing? And the answer is because from our perspective, Ourselves, we know, exist. I exist, that I know. Whether God exists, we got to think about it. So from my perspective, it's yesh miyayin. We learn Chassidus brings down. There's a Pasik in Shmuel. Kel deyais Hashem. Hashem is the God of knowledges. What does it mean, plural? So the Medrash says, there's das elyein and there's das tacht. There's God's perspective. And there's our perspective. Our perspective is we exist. Yes. God, you know, if, you, if, you, if something by a human doesn't exist in one of the five ta- uh, senses, it doesn't exist. If we can't see it, smell it, feel it, whatever. It doesn't exist. So because in, in our world, God doesn't exist, so it's called yesh miyayin. From God's perspective, he is Yash and the world is Ayin. Because another reason why is it called Yash me Ayin? God is not Ayin. God is not, not nothing. Why is it called? So no, number one is from our perspective. But the second reason Chassidus explains why is it called Yash me Ayin? Because the level of godliness that creates us is like he says, a ray of a ray of a ray of a ray. I mean, it's only Ayin. Ayin means compared to Hashem, it's nothing because it's only a ray. So where does pluralism begin? Pluralism begins when Atzilis, which is the world of Bittu, comes into Bria, Yesh Miyayin, that's the definition of Bria. Yesh Miyayin, so that's where Yesh begins. That's where the lack of Bittu begins. That's where pluralism begins. Because, yeah, but we're nothing. We're a ray of a ray of a ray of a ray. Let me ask one second, one second, one second. Stop, 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 stop. One drop of water in the ocean is valuable? Yes or no? Yes or no? One drop in the ocean, not in the, in the sink. every single drop of the ocean, then it is valuable. No. So each drop by itself. Each, I mean, the ocean is made out of drops. Each drop by itself. No. Is worth anything? No. no. You can't say it's worth nothing. I understand. Because, be, well, well, I'll tell you why. <laughs> why? Because the Gemara says at the end of Hades that Rabbi Yeshua had two students, and one of them was Yocholni Lashar Kamatipas Yeshbayan. This is, don't forget, in the time of the Mishnah. Pre calculators, pre computers, pre everything, yeah? He was able intellectually to figure out how many drops of water there is in the yam, in the sea, or in the ocean. Okay? In Israel, they had the Mediterranean, the yam. So he was able to figure out mathematically with his brain, not with a computer, how many drops of water. Because, so, yes, it's still finite. The amount of water in the ocean, let's say, is at trillion, 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 trillion drops of water. Yeah, but it's the limited amount. You take one drop, the ocean is smaller. But conceptually, one drop of water in the ocean is nothing. Uh, it, re- 
an MS, you take away one drop of water from the ocean, the ocean is now smaller. But you don't feel it that way. Okay. Now, if every creation in the world is one word, one word from Hashem's mouth, one word like Dr. Rebbe says in Perikhov of Tanya, one word compared to the power of speech we have, which is infinite, is one compared to infinite. Now, thought is even higher than speech. And midas are even higher than thought. And seichel is even higher than that. And willpower is even higher than that. Yeah? So one word, one word, compared to our essence, is basically non-existent. It's nothing. Yeah? One word that we say, compared to the power of speech, power of thought, midas, seichel, willpower, essence. Okay, so now, everything in this universe not only in this room. Everything in this universe, bidvar Hashem, with one word of God's mouth. Okay? Now, you tell me, the universe is something? Amazing. It's amazingly nothing. Amazingly nothing. Amazing. And yet, Amazing. what does Chzidus come along and teach us? One mitzvah. One mitzvah connects you to that essence. Can you imagine? We were learning last night in Tanya, in the class in Tanya, in Perak Hafei, that the Rebbe says, if you think about it, if you think this aspect, you don't have to have Avram Avinu's Ava and Yira and all that stuff. Revealing the natural instinctive love that the Nefesh Kiss has. You know, just use your brain. Not reach Avram Avinu's level of Ava. You will realize that not to sin or on the contrary, to do a mitzvah compared to the temptations that you want to fulfill by thinking, speaking, doing something you're not allowed to do, it's nothing. It's all idol worshiping. Because you're going against the will of Hashem. So, yeah. So therefore he says, Elohim, that level of, is Yashmiyaya. And therefore the world is taka pluralism. And he says, um, so therefore, when does Elohim chayim, when does the level of Elohim give life? That's when Melech Ha'ilam, Melech Ha'ilam, when he comes into the world. That's what we say, by the way, after Baruch Hu, in Berchus Krishna, we're talking about, you know, Marabu Masech Hashem Kul Mechach Masiz, all that. In fact, based on what we're learning here, Chassidus explains that simply in davening, when you say, Marabba, right after Baruch, right? You say, Marabba Masach Hashem. It's a, a statement. Wow, look how many creations, God, you made. Kulam Bachachma Sisa. You made them all with wisdom. Yeah, it's a statement. Chzidis comes along and says, no, it's not a statement. It's a question and answer. Marabba Masach Hashem. How can from one simplistic entity how can pluralism come from one God? How can pluralism come from one Hashem? Where does pluralism come from? Hashem Echad. Yochid. How does how does Marab? And the answer is because it goes through the level of Chachma. Malar is Kinyan Echad, it says Malchus. So the answer is, you know how pluralism comes from godliness, like he's saying over here. There's a ray of the Shechina, and therefore it goes through the level of the world, and world is ishtaushalus, and world is limitation, and world is ilavalu, and therefore, that's how pluralism comes from one God. But that's only from our perspective. And by the way, it's Keldeus Hashem. Hashem has both interpret, both look, both approaches. Because if you think about it, if God doesn't have our approach of Yeshmiyai, how can we have it? So Chassidus explains that the fact that we have a concept called Yeshmiyai, by the way, Torah says, Bara Elohim Yeshmiyai. Bara means Yeshmiyai. How do we get, because in Elokust there's such a perspective. In other words, world perspective, that the world is Yeshmiyai, not Ayin Miyesh. 
our perspective exists in godliness already. And that's called the name of Elohim. One, one small observation. One, one second. That means, even in Hashem's perspective, there is a concept called Yeshmi Ayin, pluralism and Lachem Bittal. That is called the name of Elohim. And because Elohim is plural, it's the source of pluralism. But in godliness, it's Elohim. It's a holy name of Hashem. But from there, it allows pluralism. Lack of bit. One second. What? Uh, when you said that one word, that the act of one word in, the, in comparison to the essence of nothing, it's not the effect of one word. Because speech has a lot, I mean, our speech maybe as an act is not, not significant, but as a, as a, a, a it's to itself could be very significant. Yeah, our tzitzah of doing a mitzvah is also very significant. Hmm? Our, our doing of a mitzvah is also very significant. I'm just saying Only because Hashem said so. A good word or a bad word could make it. Mathematically, effect. a finite person doing a finite action, because term mitzvahs are limited in time. You can't bench lulav today. If somebody takes a lulav in Nesrik today and makes a bracha, they did an Aveda. It's called making a bracha in vain. Yeah? Every mitzvah has a time and place. Shema, you have to do it a certain time, not later, not the middle, you know. So you have all that. How in the world can a finite action of a finite human being in a finite world do anything? But the answer is, Hashem said, when you finite creature, the lowest of the lowest of the low, with the nefesh of bamas, in a gullus, in everything, and you still do a mitzvah, so then what do you accomplish, Hashem said? I am allowing you to baruch atah Hashem, to bring down the level of atah, into havai, into lukeinu, into melech ha'ilam, that you are bringing the level of atah, the essence of Hashem, into this, Lousy word. What? Yeah, that means we internalize that level of God. Yeah.